Uh, today I want to talk to you about the results that we have obtained in the last three years of uh, work. And we are uh, uh, involved in the study of uh, functional and biochemical relationship between the member of vascular endothelial growth factor family involved in angiogenesis process. Uh, so, mm, all, all of you know that uh, the uh, uh, cardiovascular system is a very complicated thing. And uh, in Naples, uh, we have to, the opportunity, one of the few opportunities in the world, to see how complicated and extended this, this uh, cardiovascular system. The next slide is not so nice, but is uh, one of the unique opportunities to uh, see what means the cardiovascular system. This is located in the, uh, a little museum in, in the center of Naples, the Cappella of Raimondo di Sango. And uh, there are two skeletal, and all that you see is the vessels of these two persons. The Prince of San Severo was an alchemist. No one knows what uh, he injected in the vein of these two persons. But for sure, after uh, 200 years, we have the opportunity to see effectively how is complicated this, uh, the cardiovascular system. And indeed, also the organ that are highly vascularized was conserved after this treatment. So, uh, no, they have tried, tried to understand, but they have never been able to understand what, what, what this guy injects in these two peoples. Uh, so there is a, con a connection between Naples and angiogenesis for sure. So uh, many of you uh, know that uh, in this complicated process, there are many go factor family and uh, molecular player. Uh, the, the angiogenesis is a very complex phenomenon and also the uh, direct need of many cellular types, in particular cells re recruited for bone marrow in the adult, while during uh, the uh, embryonic development there is the, the first phenomenon that is called vasculogenesis, in which there is the assembling of uh, uh, primitive endothelial cells, then followed by angioarterogenesis process. Um, the great interest for angiogenesis comes uh, from the observation that many important diseases, uh, it is involved in many important diseases. In diseases in which there is uh, an increased vascularization and then the therapeutic, the therapeutic approach is uh, uh, devoted to inhibit angiogenesis, like cancer or old uh, neovascularization disease of the eye. While in other diseases, like all these ischemic events, there is a decreased vascularization, and then the requirement for therapeutic approach is to stimulate neovascularization. And uh, uh, recent data of the Center for Prevention of Disease has indicated that collectively about one third of the uh, world population is affected during the life with a situation in which angiogenesis is involved. Then for sure, angiogenesis uh, is one of the most important targets from a pharmacological point of view. And uh, uh, in the adult, uh, uh, the angiogenesis is uh, formally in, uh, in equilibrium state, and uh, there is the so-called angiogenic switch, and, uh, in which uh, there is the activation the, uh, of the mechanism that stimulates the growth of new vessels. And uh, uh, for sure, the uh, hypoxia is one of the most important uh, stimulus to, uh, for activation of angiogenesis, then the activation of many signaling pathways the presence of nitric oxide and, per and per vessel permeabilization. And in the last year, it has been uh, clear, clearly demonstrated the crucial role of many cells uh, recruited for bone marrow that take place in this phenomenon. So uh, my small group of research is involved in the study of vascular endothelial growth factor that for sure is the most important growth factor family involved in angiogenesis. And this is a classical uh, uh, picture that you can find in any review that talk about this uh, growth factor family in which there are five members, VHFA, the most important member that member that is able to bind to the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2 and 1, the specificity of PLGF and VHFB for, for, the, for the receptor 1, and the two factors much more involved in lymphangiogenesis that are able to bind vascular uh, growth factor, the receptor 3, and also in part the receptor 2. So I, I will show you that in effect the situation is much more complicated than this. Um, from the therapeutic point of view, for sure, VHFA become the most important target because it's the most potent factor and there's a great, great activity on, the, of endo on endothelial cells. And then uh, all the possible biotechnological approaches have been uh, developed to find inhibitors of VHF, uh, of VHFA, like monoclonal antibody anti-VHF or aptamers, soluble receptors, antibody anti-receptors, or small uh, 
molecule uh, able to act as uh, TKA inhibitors. And as uh, many of you probably know, Avastin, that is a monoclonal antibody anti-VGF, has been the first uh, antiagiogenic drug approved for cancer treatment. So for sure the block of VGF is one of the important step. But it's also, uh, it is also true, uh, this is the classical picture of uh, approval of Avastin, though there is a delay in, tumor uh, in increase of tumor survival of patients treated with, uh, with Avastin. Um, it was also true that has been demonstrated that uh, uh, the treatment with the anti-VHF molecule is able to effectively, uh, strongly inhibit uh, the vessel uh, formation. But uh, if, the, if the treatment is suspended after today, there is the start of, 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 of new angiogenesis uh, activation, and after seven days of suspension, there is a situation similar to the untreated mice. So uh, what uh, is clear is that for sure, uh, the block of EGF is crucial, but it's also true that some patients uh, are not responding to this uh, therapy, uh, and that many patients develop resistance. This is because the angiogenesis uh, uh, as uh, all the complex uh, process that happens in our uh, body is uh, uh, re uh, regulated by many factors. And uh, in this case, regarding the family of, of, of uh, growth factor, the VHF growth factor family, for sure, the, probably the blocks of more than one single factor of this, of this family may, be, may increase the therapeutic outcome. And this also because uh, it has been reported that also the block uh, uh, of VHFR2 and VHFR1 by anti monoclonal antibody or by uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor give a strong inhibition of angiogenesis, as well as the block of PLGF, um, <coughs> that is one of the most controversial genes studied in the world. And, uh, uh, but it's also true that actually there is a, a clinical trials uh, for antibody anti PLGF. And it seems that uh, uh, the first result seems encouraging. Um, this to underline that um, in, um, initially this pathway was not uh, uh, considered so much for uh, a therapeutic approach, but uh, the results of the last year has eviden ev evidenced how this pathway is also important for uh, the, the regulation of angiogenesis because R1 is uh, expressed in many uh, types of cells. And then uh, in particular, it's important the expression of bone marrow of, uh, cells uh, that are recruited at angiogenic site. Uh, and in addition, it has been also reported that block of VEGFA in tumor situation by different VEGFA agents determine the, an upregulation of the factor that specifically bind FLIT1. So this may be one of the escape strategy that uh, tumor uh, uh, may activate to uh, obtain a VGFA independent tumor goal. Um, uh, so as I told you before, uh, the situation of, of, of factor uh, of this go factor of family is much more complicated. Why? Because uh, Classically, VHF A is able to bind to both the receptor and PLGF and VHF B just to the receptor one. It, it is also true that VHF A <coughs> is able also to induce heterodimerization of receptor. And that uh, if these mem uh, proteins are co-expressed in same cells, they may generate heterodimer that for their nature may just bind FLIT1 or induce receptor heterodimerization. And, uh, <coughs> For example, there are some data in literature that indicate that this heterotimer may, be, may bind also KDR. And I will show you that uh, I think we have definitively demonstrated that this is, is not the case. In addition, many of you know that uh, the receptor one is also expressed as a soluble form. This is one of the most potent anti-angiogenic molecules, also because it's able to block all the activity of all this uh, possible combination of homodimer and heterodimer. And uh, recently, it is also been also discovered the soluble form of receptor 2, that in soluble form seems to be specific for VHFC, then is much more involved in, lymph in inhibition of lymphangiogenesis than in inhibition of um, angiogenesis. So, based uh, on this idea, you can also consider the, that uh, all these genes are expressed in different isoforms, and then in theory, if you consider the heterodimerization, you can have 24 different VHFA, PLGF, heterodimer, and 12 different VHFA 
the AGFB heterodimer. And uh, no one knows what this kind of molecules do. If, the, if we are talking about uh, redundant molecules that act active the same kind of signal, or, of, or if we are sp speaking about uh, molecules that can activate different things on cells. So, some years ago, in, uh, to study the interaction between PLGF and FLIT1, we study uh, for many years PLGF also because this uh, gene has been cloned in my institute by Graziella Persico, uh, we uh, were able to generate a variant in which the residue D and E72 and 73 in alanine generate a, a protein that was enabled to bind the receptor. This is <coughs> an ELISA by the DSA, for, for example, unable to stimulate capillary-like tube formation. So this protein, and also with other I say we demonstrated that they lose completely the ability to bind to receptor one. <coughs> so now our hypothesis was that uh, if we transfect this variant um, in tumor cells expressing the AGF, we were able to force the, the formation of a heterodimer, and consequently we have a reduction of uh, production of active VGFA, because these molecules are not able to bind to receptor one or to induce receptor heterodimerization. And we generated a stable clone in two different human tumor cell lines over expressing these proteins. So um, initially, we decided to uh, finally establish what are the binding property of the heterodimer. So this is an ELISA based essay. You can see like, like how VHF may bind to KDR receptor to receptor 1, while the heterodimer bind to receptor 1, but not to KDR. In terms of receptor activation, we generated some cell line that stably overexpressed the receptor. So this is a, a cell line in which is overexpressed the receptor one. And as expected, as you, as you can see, PLGF, the heterodimer, and VHGF are able to activate the phosphorylation on receptor one. If we move on UEC that express both the receptor, VHGF is able to activate the phosphorylation of receptor two. PLGF as expected, no, and the heterodimer, yes, because the heterodimer is able to induce receptor heterodimerization. If we move to a cell line over expressing KDR, we have the ability of EGF, of course, to activate the receptor, the heterodimer, no, as expected. <coughs> we evaluate also if the heterodimer is able to inhibit this activation, because as you can see, these are dimeric protein that induce dimerization of a receptor, and then alpha of a protein of heterodimer for VHF may be able to inhibit the uh, KDR heterodimerization. And, but as you can see, the presence of a 12 time mole molecular excess of uh, heterodimer give uh, in, in, an inhibition of uh, KDR activation, thanks, uh, KDR activation by VHF. Then we uh, purify the uh, mutant heterodimer from the uh, medium, <coughs> culture medium of uh, tumor stable transfector cell lines. This is uh, the visualization with an antibody anti heterodimer. Uh, this is the, the glycosylated form, this is the recombinant form. And uh, uh, this is recognized also by an anti PLGF antibody. This is the heterodimer in glycosylated form and uh, recombinant form. This is, for example, the PLGF cell by RNDN system, and as you can see, there is a more than 50% that is monomer form and not the PLGF dimer form, dimer form. In terms of uh, ELISA SA, uh, our uh, uh, mutant lose the ability to bind the receptor one. Of course, uh, PLGF DA do not bind via, uh, FLIT1, VHF, uh, wild type, yes. And in terms of uh, receptor phosphorylation, lose the ability to activate KDR in, on UX cells and to activate FLIT1 on to, no, to entry FLIT1 cells. So this protein is effectively enabled to bind and activate KDR. Um, so we generated, uh, as uh, I told you before, the stable clone of expressing uh, PLGF1 or the variant, and uh, as a control, of course, we transfected the cells with the empty vector. And this is a LIS essay to uh, uh, quantify in the medium of the culture of these cells the concentration of the PLGF. 
uh, of EHF and uh, uh, PLGF and the heterodimer. And as you can see, we were able to reduce of, to 50% the production of EHF in cells expressing PLGF1 and DA, and uh, we have the appearance of the heterodimer. So our variant does not bind to receptor, but is able to generate heterodimer with VHF like the wild type protein. So we uh, evaluate if in vitro there are some differences in growth of this clone, but as you can see, they go in a, similar, in a way similar to the non-transfected cells. And the data that I show you are on A27 and 80 cells, but the results obtained with the other cell line are absolutely similar. Then we injected in vivo the cells. And as you can see, while uh, the cells transfected with empty vector or with PLGF wild type show a tumor growth similar to the non-transfected cells, we have a strong inhibition of a tumor growth in cells over expressing our variant. At 21 days, we have about 80% of, of reduction. Then we left to go until 32 days and uh, they don't reach the half in terms of weight of the control tumors. So we explanted these tumors and start with the analysis. Initially, we confirmed that, that also in vivo the cells in tumor, when the tumor go, they continue to express, to reduce the, the concentration of EGF and to uh, express the heterodimer, and this was confirmed. Then we performed the vessel density analysis, and as you can see, we have a strong reduction in tumor overexpressing our variant, while cells overexpressing PLGF wild type show no difference in terms of vessel stabilization compared to the controls. This is some representative picture in which we start to see in tumor overexpressing PLGF wild type some lacune or large vessels. In addition, we evaluated the mitotic index and the percent of necrosis that we expected in, uh, decreased or uh, uh, increased in uh, less vascularized tumors. And indeed, the, the tumor overexpressing our variant show a decrease of mitotic index, index and increase of necrotic area. We have analyzed in that case tumor that uh, was different in size. So we decided to evaluate also tumor with similar volume. We had a new variant uh, in which we, uh, a new cell line uh, transfected, stably transfected with a new variant in which we changed the N16 with the alanine. This is one of the glycosylation site of PLGF. But the, this variant has a binding activity uh, to the receptor one similar to the wild type protein. Then we start the analysis. The mitotic index, index was still only lower in uh, PLGF DA tumors. Uh, the percent of necrosis, the value was the highest, but uh, the, there is a, a, a variability probably for the smaller size of tumor, then the value was not significant. But when we do again vessel density, we attain a strong inhibition. The PLGFN, like PLGF wild type, show a vessel density similar to the, to the control. And then uh, effect PLGF DA is effectively able to, when expressed the VHF producing cells, to generate the aerodimer, reduce the VHF production, and then strongly inhibit the tumor go. Uh, while uh, the cells over expressing the PLGF wild type, uh, the unique difference between these uh, tumors and these tumors is that uh, here we have PLGF and uh, heterodimer that are not able to bind the receptor. Here we have overexpression of PLGF and the heterodimer that is able to bind the receptor. So it seems that the overexpression of PLGF and uh, of a wild type heterodimer is able to rescue the effect obtained with the reduction of EGF. But, uh, the point now is what is the difference between the tumors overexpressing the PLGF wild type and the controls or tumors overexpressing our variant? This is because, uh, as uh, I told you before, uh, uh, PLGF and FLIT1 has an important role in particular in angiogenesis and in tumor uh, in the recruitment of cells expressing R1 like uh, pericyte for the vessel stabilization, monocyte macrophage, and uh, also uh, circulating and uh, progenitors of endothelial cells uh, in, at the site of neangiogenesis. So we uh, start to characterize this tumor, first evaluating uh, the difference in terms of tumor uh, diameter, to in vessel diameter and vessel dimension. So also if the vessel density is the same, you can see that there is an important difference because the tumor we're expressing our variant has the highest number of small vessels and the lowest of large vessels. While cells are expressing the PLGF wild type 
and the variant N6 in the show the high number of large vessels. So indicating that probably this is because uh, they are able to recruit more precursor of endothelial cells. In terms of vessel stabilization, again, we have a reduction, significant reduction for PLGF for our variant, and a significant increase for PLGF wall type or N16. And here you can see some representative pictures on how in tumor over expressing PLGF wall type you can find very big vessels compared to controls. And uh, uh, for monocyte macrophage, it happens the same. So we have a strong reduction in tumor over expressing our variant and a strong increase in tumor over expressing PLGF wall type. So indicating that when we lower PL VHF and we have an active PLGF and variant, effectively the recruitment of these cells is strongly inhibited. So all this experiment was propedeutic to a gene therapy approach with our PLGF variant. Why? Because for generated heterodimer, this gene must be co-expressed with VGF. And then the unique way to, to, to think of a, to a theoretic approach is, is uh, uh, introduce the gene of our variant in cells over expressing VGF, then there will be the generation of heterodimer and the reduction of VGF production. And then we, uh, in collaboration with Lucio Pastore in Naples, we generated some adenovirus for PLGFDA. Uh, this is, uh, we evaluated this, if this uh, adenovirus are able to infect the cell line that we used, the EA 2780, and uh, uh, the, the, the response was yes. And we evaluated if, uh, uh, in, in transducing the cells with the, vi with the viral vectors, we were able to reduce the concentration of EGF, yes, and uh, uh, evaluate the presence of the heterodimer. So it seems to work like uh, stable clones. And we design uh, this kind of, of, of um, uh, experimental plan. We injected the cells, that time at the non-transfected cells, of course, the wild-type cells. And when tumors reach 200 milligram of volume in the average, we injected uh, one, uh, 5 for, uh, uh, to 10 to 7 PFU, PFU uh, intratumorally, and we repeated the injection after seven days. And we stopped the experiment at 20 days because, as you can see, we have, uh, again, uh, that PLGF, well, the uh, tumor transduced with PLGF well type show a growth similar to the control that was obtained transducing tumors with the ADVGFP while tumor that was trans transduced with a PLGFD gave a very strong inhibition to Morgo. And I can see in, th in that case an unexpected, because in that case, if you compare to the previous data, uh, we start with transfected cells that basically express the heterodimer, and then they bas basically de determine has a, a reduction of VHF. In that case, we uh, injected at that time and then we have the tumors that are growing, and, but still our variant was able to, uh, that, to induce this very strong inhibition of tumor growth. Um, we characterized also these tumors, and very quickly I show you that the results were very similar to that obtained with transfected cell line, because we have a reduction of vessel density only for the variant, not for PLGF wild type reduction of vessel stabilization, uh, not for PLGF what type that show an increase, of course, of SMA positive vessels, the same for monocyte macrophage, and again for uh, the reduction of mitotic index, increase of percent of necrosis only in tumor uh, uh, trans uh, transduced with PLGF DA. Uh, at that point, we uh, decided also to, ev to evaluate another things. Um, differ e differently from tumors generated with transfected cells, here we injected intratumorally the adenovirus. Adenovirus are able to uh, infect also endogenous cells, mouse cells, like uh, uh, pericyte, like uh, endothelial cells, like monocyte macrophage cells. All cells that express high amount of PLGF. So we uh, uh, concluded that probably this strong inhibition uh, that was achieved was probably due not only because the variant inhibit VHF, but also because the variant may inhibit endogenous PLGF by formation of endogenous mouse dimer composed by endogenous mouse PLGF and the human PLGF DA that we transduced. And then in, we decided to evaluate if we were able to detect this interspecies dimer and this. Uh, 
it's possible to do using uh, the same reagent uh, that normally was used for, for ELISA assay, but simply using a mouse encoding, for example, in ELISA assay, in human, anti human PLGF antibody in detection. And effectively, we were able to detect the presence also of this uh, particular dimer uh, in uh, uh, tumor uh, transduced with PLGF what type and with B PLGF D. And then uh, 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 we can conclude that effectively uh, this approach, uh, this, this gene may uh, uh, represent a, an important tool for gene therapy uh, in, in, the, in that kind of approach. Um, another thing was to evaluate if this approach may be used in a different, in a complete different biological context. And uh, we have a, a very good collaboration with Professor Ambati of Kentucky University that is one uh, very experienced and talented ophthalmologist. And then we decide to evaluate uh, if we were able to inhibit um, in the model of choroid neovascularization uh, the neovessel formation using uh, this approach. Uh, uh, this is a model that m is mimic, mimic, mm, particularly mimic the age-related macular degeneration. That is a, a very large diffuse disease that increase uh, together with the uh, with increase of the um, uh, age of patients. And um, the the model uh, is, is obtained by creating some da damage on the branch membrane. That is a membrane that separates the choroid from the retina. And when uh, with laser is uh, uh, provoked that damage, so what happens is that vessels from choroid invade the retina area and uh, uh, go in a very strong way and uh, invading the, re the retina area. So the idea was uh, to uh, practically inject uh, that time uh, an associated virus that we generated in collaboration with Lorena and Mauro. Uh, in that case, we used adeno-associated adeno virus of type 2 that is not so perfect for, for eye because, because inject only choroid cells. Uh, and the results was still interesting because we have a, in that case no so strong inhibition, as you can see, about 35-40% uh, uh, with viruses expressing our variant. This is the classical view that you can have of a uh, uh, grow of vessels from choroid to the retina. Uh, but we obtained, uh, I, I repeat this, I underline this with the serotype 2 of a deno associated virus. Now we are testing uh, exactly in, the, in, the, in this day the uh, adenovirus 5 that was able to infect also the photoreceptor, that is one of the, uh, the cells that uh, produce the largest amount of EGF in the eye. Uh, and as you can see, we, uh, with, other, with the serotype 2, uh, they obtain a very low uh, transfection, uh, transduction of, of choroid. So we, we, we hope that uh, with this approach, we can strongly uh, obtain, uh, obtain a strong inhibition also of choroid neovascularization. So as a first summary, I want to uh, underline that uh, this variant uh, is effectively able when co-expressed in VHF producing cells to reduce VHF cells, so uh, to inhibit angiogenesis. Um, that despite PLGF DE and PLGF1 produced similar amount of VHF, they show the important difference in terms of vessel lumen, vessel stabilization, and monocyte macrophage infiltration. And that this may be considered a new variant that is able, a new tool for gene therapy, and that uh, for its ability to inhibit at the same time PLGF and VHF. Um, again, about the eyes, I want just to, uh, I have just two or three slides to, um, uh, um, uh, to show you how this variant left us to, um, allowed us to open a new possible research line. So, um, in this paper has been demonstrated what is the molecular mechanism of cornea vascularity. You know that the cornea is uh, one of the uh, few sites of our organism where vessels are absent. So, there, in, in effect, it's a paradox because uh, the cornea express VAGF, okay, also if it's a vascular. And it's a very peculiar situation of, uh, for the vascular endothelial go factor receptor 1 because it is absent as a full length, but uh, the soluble form of this molecule is expressed at, at high level, and its function is to block the possible activity of VHF. This is a very peculiar condition. Then, uh, after the cornea, we have the limbus, an area that is very rich 
in stem cells, okay, and you consider that it's possible to re completely rebuild a cornea starting from cells of limbus, like, uh, for, example, uh, for example, Michele De Luca do in, in Modena. And then after the limbus, there is a very high vascularized compartment that is the conjunctiva. So uh, what is possible? It's possible to induce uh, cornea neovascularization uh, if you uh, do a damage in the cornea, like a, a suture or, for example, a scrape of the cornea. There is an increase of EGF. So the soluble fluid toward is not able to block all the VEGF, the new producer VEGF, and VEGF may go uh, to the, on the vessels of a conjunctiva and simulating the receptor, there is the neovascularization of the cornea by angiogenesis mechanism. So we imagined that if we inject transfect in vivo the cornea, and it's a very, very easy technique, if you transfect, for example, the cornea with uh, a plasmid, the new DNA, for uh, LACZ, LACZ, you can see that practically 100% of cells of cornea express LACZ. So we imagine that we can induce the upregulation of EGF, inject our variant, and so what we expect was the generation of heterodimer, the reduction of EGF, and then the reduction of cornea neovascularization. Okay? Uh, so we do the experiment. On the cornea extract, we still confirm the reduction of production of EGF. Okay, and the generation of, of the heterodimer. And what we happened was a very interesting result because this is a classical uh, figure. I don't know if you can see, probably if you were able to. No. Okay, this is uh, the cornea that uh, uh, as, uh, is a one of the control. So no scrape, there is no vascularization of the cornea. When you, we do the scraper uh, or the PCDNA3, um, you can see all the vessels that start to go uh, in the center of the cornea. I'm sorry, but the image is not so clear. But uh, when we do the da cornea damage and, uh, trans and inject the, our variant, we have this situation, so we expect an inhibition of angiogenesis. And indeed, we have a very strong inhibition of angiogenesis. So you can see that there is not all these vessels. When we transfect the PLGF wall type, practically we have the same results. So we have a strong inhibition of vessel vascularization. So this is very intriguing because, <coughs> as I told you, in this compartment is not expressed full length FLIT1, but only the soluble form of FLIT1. So, and these two molecules need the presence of full length FLIT1 to be active. So the, the question is, there are cells in the cornea they take place to vessel formation, and that because our FLIT1 negative are not responsive to PLGF and the heterodimer. And uh, now we are investigating on this point, and we are um, pointing our attention on the limbus stem cells. So it's possible to imagine that some limbus stem cells, when there is a, a damage and then a cornea and a vascularization, may take part to do this mechanism. And so some of the cells may differentiate in endothelial cells and generate new, new vessels. So after this point, uh, I have just a few slides to show you another approach that we have uh, used to look for inhibitors of uh, more than one factor of EGF family. And uh, as uh, Mauro told you, we, uh, I have a, a experience in screening of chemical library. In that case, we uh, uh, move to natural small molecules because we have uh, um, performed the screening with the idea to find a small molecule able to inhibit the interaction of EGF or PLGF with the receptor. So blocking the first event needed for the activity of this molecule. Normally, small molecules are, 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 are searched for intracellular activity. We decided to look for a small molecule able to act outside of the cells. And uh, we have screened uh, more than 100 extracts from plant that are being collected in different countries and used in traditional medicine. Uh, by dose dependent ELISA based they say, performed uh, on PLGF and VHF interaction with FLIT1. And we do this because we, we, you know that there is a, a very high affinity between these systems, respect to KDR. And uh, this is the 
a list of plant of country where they come from and uh, the part of the plant and the extract that we have doing. And the skinning was uh, performed directly by those dependent. And this is a classical results that you can obtain. So you can see we have used this concentration of the excerpt, so very high in first instance. And you can see there is very different kind of inhibition, but uh, we decided to consider only the extract that at highest concentration give more than 80% of inhibition. Okay. And this is what may happen. This is for VHF, but I repeat, we have a do in parallel the screening for VHF and PLGF interaction. So we, the, the, the exat was then fractioned by HPLC, and then the single or uh, fraction that contained one or two or three or maximum three compounds were submitted again to the screening. This is what, what may happen, that one of the extract, once fractionated, lose the ability to uh, give inhibition. But uh, uh, we are lucky because one of the abstracts from the uh, chloroform methanol from Crosophora uh, senegalensis, is an African plant, uh, give a very good profile. This is the fraction. And the fraction E act practically in the same manner against the PLGF fleet one or VGF fleet one interaction. Um, and the structural study of this uh, uh, fraction in which practically there is one compound at about 90% of purity give us the identity of the molecule, that is the amentoflavon. And amentoflavon comes from a unique uh, uh, B-flavonoid family. You know that flavonoids are a very large amount of molecules. There is a great interest for cancer chemo prevention, but also for uh, uh, cancer prevention, sorry, but also for the use of this molecule directly as a therapeutic agent. And in particular, amentoflavon is the, a dimer of apigenin. And apigenin, you can find many, many papers in literature if you do a search apigenin and angiogenesis or apigenin and tumor. So uh, after, when we found a molecule using this screening, uh, the first thing is to understand if the molecule bind to the receptor or bind to the soluble factor. We do this by SUFAS plasma resonance SA, and as you can see, it's clear that the molecule bind to PLGF and VGFA, not to human serum albumin. This is the dissociation constant. We are in the nanomolar range, and this is the no binding on fleet one receptor. Um, once, when we do this, we decide to evaluate if uh, apigenin and other prototype of, of flavon subfamily like naringenin and quercetin were able to bind to PLGF and VHF. But uh, the response was no, except for a very slight binding of quercetin on VHF. So it's uh, the ability to bind the VHF molecule is of, of the dimeric flavonoid structure and on the, on, on the monomeric flavonoid structure. And this is the dose-dependent assay that we perform. And as you can see, we have a very similar dose-dependent inhibition for VHF uh, uh, fleet one and uh, PLGF fleet one. This is a negative control. This is one of the non-active fraction. And interestingly, this molecule was also able to inhibit VHF KDR uh, with, a no, with a low affinity, of course. But this probably, uh, so we start to imagine that probably this molecule bind to the growth factor and in some way is able also to interfere with interaction with receptor 2. Interestingly, this molecule was also able to inhibit VHFB fleet one, but not PDGFB, PDGFB receptor interaction. So sh starting to showing some specificity for VGF family molecules. So here you can see the ability to inhibit in a dose dependent manner, PLGF fleet one phosphorylation, VHF fleet one phosphorylation, okay. And also VHF KDR phosphorylation. Uh, this molecule is able to inhibit U, uh, VEGF and PLGF UVEX stimulated migration uh, in a dose dependent way. This is for uh, the simulation for v with VEGF, with PLGF, but not the stimulation of migration with FGF2. Then, still again, it seems specific for VGF family, as well as the is a uh, uh, able to inhibit VEGF and PLGF induced capillary like tube formation. At two mi 20 micromolar, we have a fully inhibition. At 2 micromolar, we see partial inhibition. This molecule is not able to inhibit FGF induced capillary like tube formation at 20 and then 50 micromolar. 
and is not able to inhibit the positive control alone. So indicating that almost in this essay, it seems do not have action, for example, because enter into the cell and do something of different the inhibition of binding between VGF, PLGF, and the receptors. We performed also CAMSA, and again, we have an inhibition. Uh, and uh, um, at the end, we tried this molecule in vivo in, in tumors. And uh, we performed two different models, uh, uh, orthotopic melanoma with MEVO cells, and then uh, a colon carcinoma with HTT116 cells. Um, and the results was the following. Uh, we treated with, with 50 milligram kilo uh, daily, and we have a, uh, a reduction. We have no lethality, of course. We have a reduction of more than 50% of tumor go and vessel density, and also a reduction of recruitment of F40 positive cells. So it seems that in vivo this muscle is effectively able to inhibit this pathway. And finally, I show you the uh, GO curve uh, with of uh, HTGT116 uh, tumors. Also in this case, uh, in that case, we start to treat the animals when the animals have about, when the tumors was uh, about 200 milligram, so after 10 days of injection. And as you can see, as four, after four days, we still have a, a, a significant difference in terms of growth of tumor and this was about a reduction of 50% at, at the end of the protocol, as well as a, a similar 50% reduction of vessel density. So this molecule effectively in vivo seems to be able to inhibit the effect, the classical effect of VGF and PLGF uh, in vivo. And of course, uh, this means that uh, we have to work on this molecule because it's in the, the, there is not a so high affinity for the target. And finally, we were able also to do some structural characterization to, to try to understand where this molecule is able to bind the, uh, the, the molecule. So we do an uvicos linking experiment, and uh, uh, two peptides were uh, uh, identified. That it, it, it's important, this one, because this one is locali localized in the core of the protein, able to interact with the receptor. Uh, in addition, we have done some limited proteolysis experiments, and uh, in the core, uh, crucial for the binding uh, to the receptor, this is an uh, old study done on PLGF. We were able to identify two residues, and also based, but not only, but also based on these results, we performed the docking experiments. And uh, uh, the results was uh, three possible uh, binding conformation, but uh, the one was... Uh, we, uh, um, the, 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 the interaction with the low, uh, with the uh, high uh, binding energy. And uh, uh, here you can see that uh, in red there are the residues that are at six angstrom from the molecule, while uh, in green there are all the residues involved in, inter in interaction with the receptor. In yellow, that uh, identified by limited uh, proteolysis, and in blue, the residue identified by UV uh, cross-linking experiment. Of course, in that, of course, in that case, the red area cover uh, some blue residue and some yellow, uh, yellow residue. But if you when uh, um, do a, a schematization, you can see that practically this molecule is able to interact with three residues from one monomer and this residue from the other monomer. Uh, this is the type of interaction between uh, amentoflamon and uh, uh, the residue, and the way also the other uh, analysis that we have performed that, that indicate that these residues are involved in interaction. This is the kind of interaction, essentially our van der Waals interaction and also polar interaction. And this is a previous study that we done with mutagenesis analysis. So for sure, this molecule is able to interact with an area of the protein that is involved in receptor recognition. I repeat, this study has been done on PLGF, but if this molecule binds to VGF in the same area, is intriguing the fact that this is the loop crucial for KDR interaction. And some probably this may explain why, if this molecule binds here, is able also to inhibit VGF-KDR interaction. Also, if we have selected it by in a screening in which we use the interaction between PLGF and or VGF with FLIT1 receptor. 
And uh, now, uh, essentially, the most important thing is that we are working with med medicinal chemistry approach, so we are trying to modify, add uh, some, um, some group to, the, to this molecule to verify if we are able to obtain a molecule with higher affinity with, for the ligand that uh, maybe uh, will p translate in the highest activity also in vivo in terms of tumor inhibition. So in conclusion, let me thank uh, the many collaborators uh, that have been crucial in, in these projects at uh, Lorena and Mauro for the AV and Lucio Pastore for the adenovirus preparation, Augusto Orlandi that um, collaborated with us for uh, immunostochemical analysis, Dr. Ambati for all the experiment with on the uh, high, uh, Claudio Pisano of Consingo Natale that was uh, our ch teacher on tumor studies, and Tina De Tomasi, my friends and colleagues of the University of Salerno, that give us all the support in terms of extract of plant and uh, uh, surface plasma resonance, uh, fraction, uh, fractionating of the fractionation of the extract. All the chemistry aspects have been cured by Tina. Uh, for sure, uh, I can tell you that with that, uh, these two <laughs> agencies, no experiments was possible. And this is the m my small group. Valeria then now uh, is doing a postdoc in the laboratory of Ambati. Laura Onofro Ivana is uh, a very talented technician that uh, do a very good job. And all the EGB animal of stuff. Thank you very much for your attention.